Thanks. And so many of you may have experienced that you were on your phone, Googling something, and then later came home, got on your computer, opened up Gmail or Facebook, and found an ad for the same thing you were Googling earlier. That's one of the powers of online advertising. And before we get into how that works, we need some history. And it started quite similar to print advertising, where there was a relationship with a publisher and an advertiser. And the advertiser then you know, negotiated how big an ad could be, where it would exist, and how much it would cost. And then they learned about click-throughs and could find out how valuable it was to see if a user was clicking their ad. So they wanted that ad everywhere which led to pop-ups. Um, and before we get into that, let's dive a little bit more into that relationship of the publisher and the advertiser. And so there were some flaws in it. If the publisher changed the size of their page and the size of the ad, the ad needed to then match it. If the advertiser you know, wasn't performing as quickly and the page was loading without ads, that wasn't valuable to either party. And so as soon as technology allowed, which is about 12 years ago, they created an auction for finding out which advertiser is willing to pay the most for this spot on the publisher's page. And so this auction now happens in real time, and that's less than 100 microseconds to decide which ad is going to be displayed. The publisher then triggers this, and there's a whole lot of technical stuff. It could be a five-minute talk just on the technical stuff of what's happening here. But what you need to remember is that it happens really fast and that the advertiser has to decide how valuable it is to put an ad on the page. And that's partly which publisher page is it going to be, but it's also about the user who's going to that page. And so as you're going around the internet and collecting all these cookies of what you're doing, you're building this story about yourself and how valuable is it going to be for an advertiser to show you an ad for Fancy Pants? How likely will you click on an ad for Fancy Pants? And so this is what goes into this auction. And then, so delving deep into the benefits of cookies, you know, there's health benefits to cookies, but the actual browser cookies came from an altruistic ideal of if you had a shopping cart and you wanted to put some stuff in there and then browse around and look for more things to buy and then come back to that cart and actually make your purchase, we needed to store which things you wanted. And it also works amazingly well with login. So if you log into your email, close your computer, come back, you can still be logged into that email. There's third party cookies, which often get a bad rap, but there's value in those too sometimes. And that could be in the analytics that you know, a web developer can find out where people are searching, what their area of the page they're looking at, and they can then improve the content of their page based on these third party cookies. About two years ago, the EU enforced a law for data privacy. And this now allows it for users to be more selective of what information they share. So now the user has the option of saying whether or not they want a cookie to be tracking their information and where they're going. And as we're going around and accepting or denying these cookies, yeah, this same concept happened with pop-up blockers and there's ad blockers. And now most browsers, or at least some, are deleting cookies automatically. You can search incognito and delete your cookies automatically. And the advertisers are left without having these cookies to track these users. But it's still very valuable for an advertiser to have relevant content and not just random ads showing up that you aren't going to be interested in. So this is where cross-device tracking comes in. And cross-device tracking is, as I was describing, with having the phone and the computer and knowing that it's the same user. So when you're looking at the ad for Fancy Pants on your phone, and then you actually log into your computer and you buy the pants, what's going to happen is that this relationship between you and your, your phone and your computer, you don't need to see an ad on your phone anymore about pants because we know you've just purchased. And one of the ways of doing this is deterministically, when you log into Amazon on the phone and you log into Amazon on the computer, you are the same user. But that doesn't really scale when you're looking across all the other websites that you're not logging into. And so that becomes a problem, probabilistic matching for this cross-device pattern. And this uses large amounts of data. It tracks which sites you visit on these cross-devices and what IP addresses you have and all sorts of 
big data information that gets processed to find out what relevant ad to show to you. In summary, online advertising is a very expensive industry. There's hundreds of billion dollars per year being spent. And so no matter what you do, with or without cookies, the advertisers are gonna to look to show relevant content to you. Thank you. All right. So, yes, you can clap in various ways. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to clap, there is a, a more feature at the very right-hand side. If you click on participants, it's under more and there's a little clapping hands symbol. All right, so at this time, um, I'm the Q&A facilitator today. Um, so at this time, we're gonna take about five minutes for a Q&A. Um, you can, uh, probably the best way to do this is click on participants, and then there's a little um, a set of icons and you can click raise hand. Um, and I actually already see a whole bunch of raised hands. Uh, I don't know how to close the chat. Just uh, click on chat again. Oh, there we go. Got it. Cool. Um, so let's see. Let's start with um, Gabriel. Hi, thanks for the talk and thanks for putting this together. Um, I think I'm, I'm curious. A lot of us have had the apparent anecdotal experience of just talking to someone in a room about a product or an idea and then seeing that come up as ads in our searches. And I'm wondering if that is a real thing that is actually coming from audio recording or if it's just coincidence because we're probably Googling the same things. So my take on this, um, so I spent three years working in a advertising company and we focused primarily in travel ads, right? And so we didn't use any kind of technology like that. We did delve a little bit into Facebook advertising because they kind of have their own little walled garden of how they do advertising. Hmm. And it's, they, they follow a lot of the same patterns of what I described, but they also do other things and they don't share back the information to the advertiser as much as others like Google do. Um, as far as the voice speaking goes, my only take on this is that it's tied into Facebook um, and with Facebook being on your phone and they having as much control and being within this like small garden the way they are, I, I think it's uh, one of those aspects, but that's my take on it. Um, and I, I can't really say either way if that is true or not, so. Cool, thanks. Um, Molly. Molly, did you have a question? No, I don't. I was just <laughs> clapping. <laughs> Fabulous, okay, excellent. Um, let's see, um, let's go on to Paul. Oh, I was also just clapping. Awesome. All right. Um, oh, are those clap emojis or raised hands? Got it. Okay. Um, Sonia. That was also clapping, but I do have a question. Um, so when you're in private browsing mode, um, does that mean that they're, they're just not, they're not taking that information down or that's just like immediately deleting the cookies? Is that what you meant by that? Yeah, so if um, I think Firefox calls it private, Google Chrome calls it incognito, and I don't know what Edge IE calls it, but um, that means that they save the cookie to your computer, and as soon as you close that session, then that cookie is removed. So it allows them to you know, keep the data for what you're doing as you click around all those pages, and then as soon as you close that, then it'll be gone, yeah? But if there's one tab open and the other tab is open and then you close just one tab, it's still saved until they're all gone. Hmm. But the way this cross device tracking works, it's, 
as soon as they get some of that information, it'll potentially have all the rest of the information they need that even when you pull it up the next time, they won't need the historical information because they'll kind of already have an idea of who you already are. Is that based on your IP address? That's one strong aspect, the IP address, the, um, the actual browser it is that you're using. Yeah, so using different browsers for different things is one way of kind of mitigating some of the things um, and using VPNs as well but it's kind of hard to use a new browser and a new VPN for every page you visit. So like, there's really no escape. So use a different browser for your porn. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Um, we, I finally figured out the difference between clapping and raised hand. Um, so I wanted to move to Chaz. Um, Chris, I know has a question, but he's also dealing with our daughter's request for milk. So Chaz, go ahead. Okay. Can you guys hear me first of all? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I can. Um, I was having some audio troubles. So uh, given the incognito tab uh, idea, could someone conceivably leave an, in an incognito tab open for you know, an indefinite amount of time and curate what uh, advertisements they end up seeing via that tab? Or would, like, would that affect their off incognito uh, perhaps this is a poorly formed question. Uh, never mind. We'll go to the next person until I figure out how to say these words. I think I um, was sort of following that. Like, could you manipulate? You, you got it too, Jeff? Go ahead. I think so. Like, because you have your incognito session where you can do whatever you like, you know, your general browsing and your non incognito where you have just your email, for example. And mm -hmm. then if you leave the incognito open, can you see whether or not, you know, if you browse here and there, like if it's showing up. One of the key things is, uh, I immediately thought like, oh, I'm gonna give this talk about cookies. I should, actually it was even before giving this talk, I thought about how it'd be great if you could find out what data is in your cookie, right? Because all a cookie is, is this long hash, like this just string of, text, maybe a hundred characters, it varies, but it, it really doesn't say much. And so what actually happens is that when you go to times.com, you know, there's the cookie that comes from, um, you know, the, the kayak.com or whatever that has this long hash. And then kayak will be told, hey, there's a user who has this cookie from kayak and it has this hash. And so what Kayak will do, it will immediately process that and say, well, it's highly likely that this person was on our site before. So we, A, want to delve deeper into this, you know. So then we look, let's take this hash. We'll go to our database where we originally created the cookie from. And in that database, it lists all the information about what you did on Kayak, which, you know, they tracked while you were on Kayak. So they know, like, you look for the flight from here to here at this time to this time. And so all that data is just kind of in this token, this little ID, they can find out all the other information they knew about you. So there's no way to backtrack what information is in your cookie. Yeah? But the one thing you can do is you can find out all the company's cookies that you have and kind of backtrack that and say like, okay, you know, most of them won't be kayak.com, but they'll be like t.k.co or something. And there'll be some back mapping you can do to find out this cookie came from Kayak the, and what I did on Kayak. Okay. Based okay. on the fact that it's easy to delete a cookie, though, there's not going to be too much, you know, information you can gain from it either. So, okay. So to to verify, I understand the cookie acts as a like a label for that user that the company that receives the cookie can use to to determine which user that had took X actions mm. uh, was doing. Yeah, they can decode it into whatever information they have originally put on it, right? Like, or okay. used to track you and, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. Well, um, so at this time we are a little over our five minutes, um, but I know that Chris has had his hand up for a while. Would it be okay if we do a one last question and then have our break? Awesome, let's do that. 
Okay, my question is, uh, you said hundreds of billions of dollars, but there's billions of internet users. And so does that imply that if we all just spent a hundred or two hundred dollars, uh, we could fund the internet without needing all these horrible, problematic, damnable, browser-eating ads? Um, that's a good question. So in trying to like come up with that statement, I was like, you know, how much is the industry worth? Like, how do you know this? And I Googled and I found, you know, apparently there's places where they track how much an industry is worth. And the online advertising industry has gone up um, quite, you know, high and it's like rate right year over year. And they showed about 300 billion in the past year. Um, I can say as well that when an auction happens to put an ad on the page, usually they're paying, you know, in a rough area of like one to 10 cents per ad. So it's a really small amount of money to put an ad on a page. Um, and the value isn't, you know, it is still measured in click-throughs in a lot of places. And I don't know who clicks on ads, like, uh, but somehow people still click on ads and that still generates some revenue through clicks. But it's really coming down to this subliminal idea where the more I show you this ad, the more you think, oh yeah, maybe I should go back and buy those fancy pants that I was looking at before, you know, like, ah, you know, or you weren't looking at fancy pants, but then suddenly the advertiser knows you are looking at, you know, some other shirts and they think, hey, if I keep showing them these fancy pants, maybe they'll buy some of those fancy pants. So until you start buying more products, I think we'll continue to see ads for products. No matter, I, I, unless you start paying publishers to not put ads on the page. And that's one option, I guess, that the whole world could do. That would be great. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you, that was amazing. Um, so now we'll take about a five minute break. If you would like to stay and chat, you are welcome to. Otherwise, feel free to do whatever you're gonna do. Um, because we're in so many different time zones, I won't say the time, but five minutes from now, it is something 28. <laughs> Where everybody is, nobody's on like a half an hour time zone. So come back at something 33. <laughs> Bye guys. Hey, Jeff, uh, this is Brandon. I have a question. Um, what, I don't, I know you said with the Facebook part that uh, they don't really give the information back on kind of how successful the ad was from other companies that, that may have it, Google, Bing, whatever. Is there any information uh, of like a breaking point or a threshold at what makes an ad worth doing or how do they know if the ad is effective to know if they should keep doing it? Um, so one aspect is that, at least in the travel sector, a lot of the, the people who would be advertising, the airlines or what have you, um, aren't really familiar with what's happening in the space and are willing to spend a whole lot more just to try to see if this works. Um, they usually have really large advertising budgets and they're willing to, you know, their traditional media is much more expensive to get an ad on, right? Whereas, you know, it's two cents, three cents, like they're, okay, I can throw $100,000, see how this works. It worked, great, let me throw another 200,000. So there's that. The actual, so in that auction setup, um, I'm not sharing anymore, but, um, there's the DSP. And so that's where our company worked. And that's where they're getting the information of, hey, there's a spot to put an ad. How, how much am I willing to spend on this ad? And so the, 
machine learning aspect of finding out the value of this user, the click through rate, the conversion rate, you know, how likely is it going to be is how much more I'm willing to spend. But then, of course, the advertiser is still only capping to say, you know, I want to see this ad displayed 100 times per week. And so I've got to kind of match that value as well. So I think in summary, to answer your question, there's a huge business to try to figure that out and calculating the click through rate and conversion rate and how effective that ad is, it goes from just easy. If somebody clicks and then buys, yeah, there's a, a clear definition that that 10 cents worked, you know, and if not how likely it is that they came back and bought fancy pants, even though they never really wanted fancy pants. Did they see that ad? Did that work? And yeah, then it becomes a fun game of marketing and salesmanship to try to win over if it was effective or not. Sure. Um, More of planting the idea than anything else. Okay, cool. But um, I think with, as far as like Google is one of the larger facilitators in sending out, like if I'm a publisher, I can ask Google to fill the ads for me and they'll use this auction. Um, but they won't actually care as much who wins the auction, right? So, and the winners of the auction know that they showed an ad and how much they spent on it. So they're able to kind of get that data themselves. Um, I think it's with Facebook is where if I want to find out if I want it, like when I want to compete in that auction in Facebook, they'll do the algorithm themselves and based on the data that I give them, but I won't be able to find out what other ads that users showed, how likely, you know, they are and stuff. Uh, it's actually, I'm, I'm talking outside of my knowledge, I think so. No, no thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. Let's say I want fancy pants and I see them advertised. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> is it, of course I want fancy pants. Um, let, is it better for me to, okay, I see the ad and then I Google fancy pants, buy fancy pants and do it not through the ad or click on the ad, like better for the company for uh, fancy pants, LLC. Hmm. I always feel that it's better to just buy them, like go to their site and buy them directly you know, um, without clicking on the app. But I never really thought of this question and it would make them feel like their advertising money is better spent. If you clicked on their ad, they would say, hey, this works. <laughs> um, which would then just encourage them to put more money into uh, the advertising, I think, so. And so the money that they've spent on that ad they've already paid it no matter whether I click on it or not. Yeah. And let's say it's an advertisement through Facebook. Um, so the advertisements on Facebook, that means that they paid Facebook. If I click on it, does my money go to f like a hundred percent of my money go to the company or is some of that going to Facebook where otherwise a hundred percent of it would go to the company? Um, if you then buy the pants yeah. or the hundred percent of your money to buy the pants goes to the company. Okay. Um, but the company would then, so the click, like they spent, you know, two cents to put the ad on. So that money is spent. But then once they find out that once Facebook says, Hey, we saw that you clicked and we saw that you bought, we, therefore clearly did better for you. So you also should pay, you know, this much more. Um, and that kind of value comes in later. And um, I, I forgot the abbreviation for that, but it's an extra money that they would then ask for from the company at a later date and verify based on, you know, the data. Sometimes they pre-negotiate that money ahead of time and say, hey, you're, we're just going to expect that this is going to convert this much and so you pay this much already. But in theory, more money goes to Facebook after the fact as well. Okay, so better to go to their company if you don't want to fund Facebook and Google. No. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>